want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. You are-
Hallelujah. Has it been good to you? Has it really been good to you? Hallelujah. Can you praise him like he's been a good God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's blessed me this week. Oh, last week. Hallelujah. Just last night, this morning. Hallelujah. In real time. Hallelujah. I thank you for being so good to me. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise is to our God. Yeah. 
praise to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father God, in this time of silence, God, we come into your presence with humbleness of heart and with thanksgiving. Thanking you, Father God, for where you've brought us from. Thank you, Father God, for how you've watched over us and you've kept us. With every prayer, Father God, that we have given up to you, Father God, it's a prayer of thanksgiving because we know it's in you we live and move and have our being. And without you, Father God, we can do nothing. So, Father God, we come lifting up our hands to you, saying yes to your will and to your will. Father God, we are thankful for your grace and your mercy that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for the ways that you have made. God, when we couldn't see our way, God, you made a way for us. And so, God, we are thankful, we are grateful, and we give you all the praise on today. For, Father God, we know that in you we live and move again and have our people. And all we can say is, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. With every prayer, God, we say yes, because you are the partner, and we are as but clay in your hands. We thank you for the molding of our lives so that we can come to this place in unity to lift you up and to give praises unto you. And we say, have your way in the service today. Bless, Father God, your man servant, as he will bring your word for God. Let the anointing, Father God, flow free on today. So, Father God, we would not leave the same way we came. But we would leave, Father God, rejoice and we feel ready to face this new week. And God, we thank you and we give you praise. Now, God, we ask that you would bless our offering on today. Let it be for the uplifting of your kingdom. Bless each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. We do pray and give thanks. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, so this month, we honor all of our clergy. We appreciate you all. We thank you for your unwavering faith and all of your commitment to the Bible Church of Aiken. So we have something for you all. So your name is called. If you could please come forward. Thank you. Um, first, we have Mr. Carrie Staley. I got you. <laughs> yep. Um, next we do and we want to honor, even though she's not here with us, Minister Cannon. So um she is a part of us, but she's just not here. <laughs> next we have Minister Ryan. Um, next, we have Reverend Willie Blocker. <laughs> you 
You're welcome. Next, we have Elder Raymond Clark. Next, we have Elder Fluellen. You're welcome. Next, we have Elder Jeffrey Brown. Last but not least, we have our shepherd, Bishop Alexander Dwight. you all. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. If everybody could just put that on their heart and on their lips. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Everybody lift your voice and say my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Lift your voice and say, you deserve it, 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 you The glory belongs to you. Say all of the glory, all of the glory belongs to you. Only you give the glory, all of the glory belongs to you. You get the honor, all of the glory belongs to you. Lift your voice and say, you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. We praise you with our lives. 
and worship. Amen. Hallelujah. All of the glory belongs to God. You may be seen in the presence of the Lord for a moment. In the name of the Lord, we certainly honor God today who's the head of our lives. Thank God for our Lord and Savior Jesus to Christ who died for all of our sins. Amen. The Bible said God has no respect of person. And I'm glad he's not like man. Amen. So glad. I'm so glad God sees the heart of the person while we just look on the outward appearance. But I'm so grateful to the Lord and certainly want to honor all our leaders. Thank God for all the ministers. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Companions in the name of the Lord. Amen. And certainly to First Lady Dwight in the name of the Lord. Thank God for her. In Jesus' name, I want to thank God for all of you and your supporting ministry. We were at our state convention this past weekend, which was tremendous. 
in the name of the Lord, and we want to, amen, and hopefully the next meeting, which come up next year in May, in the name of the Lord, and also um, our district fellowship come up at the end of March next year. So we'll hear more about that in the name of the Lord. And just want to thank God for your continued support. And because of that, we're able to do some things uh, in the name of God. This coming month, praise the name of the Lord. And last month you heard from the uh, women in gospel. And this month you can hear from the men in gospel. Coming month. And so we want our brethren, amen. Let's be sure we support all of our, our men. We are to be, the wife and I are to be in Baltimore. Uh, I think it's the second week second week in November, we're to be in Baltimore for our national meeting, amen, in the name of the Lord. And so we, because of your support, we're able to go and represent in the name of the Lord. All right, all right, y'all ready for some word? All right, all right, y'all got to show a little bit of excitement, praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Certainly one honor. Thank God for all our visitors being here, amen, in the name of the Lord. Thank God for all of you. Amen. I want you to know, amen, we're a church where everybody is somebody. And Jesus Christ is just Lord. He's Lord of all. Amen. I'm so grateful. I'm just grateful. I'm just, for some reason, I'm just grateful. Just, I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful. All right. I, I just want to read one scripture. Just Psalms 27, verse 1. Just, just one, just one. Amen. If we can honor uh, the president, I know we can honor the word. And, and let me plug this in right quick. Listen, you, you need to register to vote. Because if this other guy get back in there, we in trouble. Amen. You see what they're already doing in our system now. They're changing a lot of things. And it's not for them, it's for us. Our children need us to fight for them. All right? All right. I'll talk about more about that later, but let's get into the word right quick. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I just want to use for the start God is. Now, you have to finish what he is to you. Okay? That's, that's, why I, that's why I didn't put anything on the end of it because I want to challenge you to recognize who he is to you. No one can reveal God to you but God himself. I can talk about him. I can tell you how I see him. But you have to see him for yourself. And that comes through you experience with him. You see, many folk know about him. But when you have an experience with him, then you can say he is. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. David writes here a song to all of us to encourage us that he reminds us that the Lord is. Notice the first three words of the text. He said, the Lord is. Now, notice now, he, he starts out by saying, the Lord is. Now, he already knew God is the creator. He, he knows that God is the one who gives life. He understands that who God is. But then he, the next word, he said, mine. In other words, the God that is becomes mine. And the word mine means to take possession of what is. Are y'all with me? And so many times what happens to us, we go on the fact of what we've heard others have said about him. But when you have an experience with him, you can say he is mine. And the word mine really means, as I said before, possession. Then he said the Lord is my what? Light. In other words, he's my illumination. Because sometimes my mind don't see him the way I need to see him. And sometimes my thoughts don't line up the way 
he wants me to think. Can I get a witness? And sometimes my behavior does not always line up with what he ordained for my life. But because he is. And because he is my light, he's my illumination. And so now he illuminates my path. That's why the Bible said the steps of a good man is ordered by who? The Lord. Because the Lord has to illuminate the path so you and I can see where we are going. And if the Lord does not enlighten us, we will continue to think that we are walking in light when many times we are walking in darkness. In other words, darkness does not mean in scripture like we cut all the lights out in here and it's dark. What it really means is that I am not aware of the move of God. And so what God does, he has to illuminate my mind. In other words, my mind now has to deal with my spirit. And when my spirit gets it, it does not matter what in front of me, how dark the situation looks. I know the Lord will illuminate my path. And then he said, not only is he my light, he deals with my salvation. Now, the word salvation in the Old Testament, that does just not mean that I'm saved. What the word salvation really means, my deliverance. And so there are times in my life that I find myself in situations that I don't want to be in. And I don't know how to get out of it. Uh, can I get a witness here? And sometimes I'm there because of other folk. And sometimes I'm there because of myself. I, and praise the name of the Lord. There are times that I spent more money than I should have spent. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong church. Y'all rich out here. Uh, there, there are times that I find myself, a man driving in a vehicle and my needle is past the area that I know it shouldn't be past because I have to go to a certain distance and I know if the Lord don't allow me to get to a place, sooner or later I won't be riding, I'll be walking. And But what the Lord does, he illuminates my mind to remind me, you better stop to the gas station. If you don't stop there, guess what's going to happen? Praise the Lord. Hey Amen. You're not going to be like, you're not going to be like Philip that I translated you from one place to another after he baptized the unit. You're going to have to go and get call somebody and hope your cell phone works. And even if you call them, you hope they pick up. Uh, because, you know, folk got, you know, caller ID now. Uh, and sometimes that caller ID shows up. What do the world she want now? Uh, I ain't got time for her today. Uh, uh, praise the name of the Lord. But, but because he's our deliverance, he knows how to send help in time of need. And sometimes God will cause uh, uh, someone to bless your life that you have no connection to. But what you don't understand, they have connection with God. That's why it's good to be in the presence of the Lord in the midst of the saints of God so you know who you're worshiping with. Praise the name of the Lord. Because there's power in unity. Don't miss that. There's power there. But then he goes on to say, he said, whom shall I fear? Now, that's a different point here. Because he's trying to get us to understand that at times in life, we're going to be challenged. Nobody wants to be challenged. You think once you get saved, I'm sweetly saved. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm enjoying the trip. But let me bring you a revelation. The devil don't want you to go where you're going. And he will use any object, any person, any situation to keep your mind off of the things of God and not realizing that God got you. Look at somebody. He got you. He got you. Praise the Lord. It may not look like it. It may not. You may stumble at it sometime. Praise the name of the Lord. Ah, praise the Lord. Ah, I don't know how to say this, but just not, you know, because uh, sometimes folk make you think they got it all together. Uh, you know, you know, these folk make you make you think they're perfect. You know, they're always in the spirit. Uh, they all, you know, they just ooh, ooh. You see them at the light, ooh. You see them in the grocery store, ooh. Just ooh. And, but but when, when life hits, 
Because life going to hit all of us. When life hits, see, David writes out of experience because there was one experience the Bible talks about when he was running from Saul and, and when he was running from Saul and, uh, and he find himself in a cave and out of that cave his family came to him and praise the name of the Lord when his family came to him these is the same brothers that you know had an issue with him being king and anointed but let me tell you something when God has an anointing on your life everybody's not going to approve of you you got to understand how to walk in your anointing without man's approval uh, Y'all, they're going to help me today. And because sometimes you got to understand that God has a purpose on your life. God did not call you just to call you. He did not save you just to save you. God has a purpose in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. And so you got to understand we all must come to this revelation. And so now there were men that were with Saul that all of a sudden they were burdened. They followed somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. But they always came kept them you know in a situation where they were just frustrated and disgusted and so now it comes to David and they're broken and they're hurting and yet David is hurting in himself but the only thing David got going is the anointing and sometimes you got to understand when the Lord is the only thing you have going for you is his anointing pray that's the only thing you got going on you can't explain to folk what's happening you can't explain to folk the situation you trying to get folk to understand but baby and my brothers and my sisters you got to know that the lord is who he say he is in your life and so now there was an experience where david now finds another experience when he finds himself in a city i pray of the philistines notice now he defeated goliath which was a philistine and later on he's in a stronghold of the philistines even the enemy knows david has an anointing uh, the world know when there's an anointing on you they may not can explain what God's purpose is but everybody know it's something special about you praise the Lord and now let me help somebody else out you know, sometimes folk are hiding in your presence uh, trying to be like you but praise the, the difference is uh, even though they hang with you you have something they don't have I, I praise the Lord. Well, let me help some of you all out again. I, well, there may be a person that let's say they have a position on the job. I, in other words, they are, uh, I would say, uh, the supervisor or the manager. I, and no matter how many workers come in the office and hang around that individual, that individual is the only one who carries the title. Stay with me here. That individual has the right to say, y'all need to go to work. Get out of my office. You need to go back to your assignment. Because he has the power or she has the authority. That is what it is when you get anointed by God. When the enemy comes in and try to surround you, you can speak to the enemy and say, you got to leave. Because I speak the word of God over my life. I speak the word of God in the situation and no weapon that form against me shall be able to prosper because I'm anointed by God because I understand that God is my light. He is my strength. He is my salvation. Then he said, whom shall I fear again? Why? Because he understands there is no fear in love. Notice what he's saying. There's no fear when you're walking in love. When you walk in God, there's no fear there. Because why? God is perfect. He's a perfection of love. He's a perfection of who he is. And he said, but perfect love do what? Cast it out. What? Fear. And the only reason we fear is because we're not sure about our relationship with God. When you in love with a person, oh, can I deal with that for a moment? I, uh, can, can I, I just use uh, Miss A this morning I, I, I'll just use her this morning when we in love when you in love you don't question other issues you just know there's trust there and she can go around the world but I know she's coming back 
Uh, praise the Lord. I, I preach a many times for many folk. Uh, and sometimes it was two hours from my house. Uh, in the middle of the night, I'm driving home. Uh, but when I get home, the light's on. The door's not, you know, it ain't shut me out. Uh, she's waiting on me to come home. Why? Because I know love is there. Uh, she trusts that I'm going, coming back the same way I left. Uh, that's what love is with God. Uh, when you're in love with God... Things don't bother you. Situations don't move you. It don't matter what you find your situation in. You know that the Lord is going to be there. Because God is not like a man. He should not lie, nor will he repent. If God says, I'm going to bless you, you get yourself together. If God said he's going to move in your life, you don't have to question your neighbor. The problem with too many believers today, we are trying to get other folk approval of what God says. You got to grow up a little bit. Tell somebody to grow up a little bit. And understand because fear has torment. When you don't believe God, guess what? You torment yourself. You wrestle with doubt and you wrestle with fear. You try to make excuses. Why this is happening and that's happening. But David came to a place in his life where he recognized something. God going to have to be the one that's fixed this issue. I can't fix it. He, he anointed me for the position and I'm not there yet. I got to deal with folk I don't understand how to deal with. I know I've been anointed. I know that the Lord is. But the problem is I'm dealing with folk that don't know what I know. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe I don't have them kind of folk here. Maybe you, everybody you deal with know everything that you're going through. But my brothers and my sisters, sometime God will reveal something to you and the neighbor don't know it. Because what God has for you is not for them. Uh, I know this is hard to deal with this morning, but I want you to understand something. Your pain is your pain. Uh -huh. What you can tolerate, I may not can deal with. What I tolerate, you may not can deal with. And sometimes we become judgmental. And we'll say to a person, boy, that ain't nothing. But you get it and then we'll find out. Uh -huh. You go through what I go through. Uh -huh. Let folk you love stab you in the back. See how much you straighten up. Uh -huh. let, let folk uh, that you help now, they turn their back on you. Uh -huh. Let's see how strong you are in the Lord. Uh -huh. It's easy to tell somebody what God can do uh -huh. when you have not experienced situations. Uh -huh. Maybe I'm talking to myself. Uh -huh. There are times uh -huh, that Trouble comes into everybody's life sometime. I, I, yeah, yeah, I know where it came from, but it's a true statement. Don't matter, don't matter how good you got life is, and the problem with a lot of us, especially our folk, we come through some hard times. We come through difficult situations. Everybody didn't come with a silver spoon. You had to work for what you got. And then when you were working for, for God to bless your life, somebody got the nerve to say something negative. Like, you know, you owe them because you trust God to get you through while they're sitting there complaining. No, no. I'm to the place now. You got to get over how blessed I am. You got to get over what God doing in my life. I ain't got time to sit around and pat you and try to kiss up to you because God's been too good to me to wait on you to praise him. Bear with me here. I got, I got about 10 more minutes. I got to get you out of here because kick off at one. I got to get you out of here. Uh -huh. I got to get you out of here. Uh -huh. I knew what to tell the truth. I pick on y'all last Sunday. My team playing today. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But that's all right. That's all right. Uh -huh. But then, but then. 
then he says this he that fear it is not made perfect in love that's a challenge to us he said when fear comes in it reveals to me I'm not really where I say I am in God that's what it means but I've come to this conclusion even though sometimes when I'm faithless I found out he remains faithful I'm so glad that God is faithful I heard the song it said this he said truly my soul waited upon God there are times I need God to come in a hurry anybody ever been there Lord what I'm facing if you don't come right now I'm going to make the wrong decision. I wish I had about 10 folk that just say, that's me, that's me. If you don't show up right quick, Lord knows I'm a trip. Uh -huh. Way back somebody said you ain't that safe uh -huh. uh, Yeah I know you're covering it up uh -huh. He said from him that cometh salvation uh -huh. My deliverance gonna come from you uh -huh. I know I know when I was in the world uh -huh. Can I just go down memory lane for a moment uh -huh. I know when I was in the world I knew what to do uh -huh. When I was in the world I knew how to handle them uh -huh. When I was in the world I knew how to handle situations uh -huh. The problem is uh -huh. I'm in God now. And the problem is this. God is telling me to wait. But my call of mine is saying, fix it. Uh, can I help somebody? My flesh said, go back. He don't mind you going back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Lord, I'm low. I'm feeling depressed. And Lord, I know I love you, but why I'm going through what I'm going through. Well, my flesh said, man, go ahead and take a sip. Uh -huh. Go ahead and get high again. You know, anybody going to know it. You know, they done passed the law now. It's legal. Just tell them you got a little glaucoma. Uh -huh. Y'all ain't going to help me. I know maybe I'm in the wrong church. Maybe I'm in the wrong house. Maybe just in case. I know, I know. But he said, Lord, he, he only is my rock. He's my stability. And Lord, if you don't keep me sound, I'm going to miss my deliverance. Then he goes on to say he's my defense. In other words, when the enemy comes in and says, trying to persuade me, you know a little bit ain't going to hurt. You know that, but the Bible tells me a little leaven, leaven the whole lump. A little lie ain't going to hurt you. You know how it is. Yeah, well, I <laughs> you know, folks, you, you, know, you can tell. <laughs> They're trying not to say the whole thing. Ha, you know, and they just want you ha, to feel comfortable. Ha, but the truth of the matter is we got to learn to speak the truth. Ha, ha, baby, you just wrong. Ha, 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 just tell the truth. Ha, ha, because when you lie, ha, you got to remember how you lied. Ha, you got to remember every word because these young folk, they don't miss nothing. Ha, uh -huh, ha, uh -huh. One time they could tell you, you know, oh, well, well can I, let me go down memory lane again. Ha, uh, Mother Staley probably can remember these days. Ha, when old folk came around, they ran us out the house. Ha, uh -huh, ha, you go outside. Ha, you didn't dabble in their conversation. Ha, no matter what was going on, you wasn't there. Ha, you didn't go to your room. You went outside. Ha, and they shut the door. Ha, and had whatever they were going on in there. Ha, whatever their conversation was, was their conversation. Ha, but nowadays, it's different. Ha, uh, everybody got a cell phone. Ha, everybody got everything now. Ha, they want to watch and, you know, get in on the conversation. Ha, the young folk want to tell you how to live. Ha, child, if I were you, this is what I would do. Ha, child, you ain't begin to live yet. Ha, you got to know what it is for God is. Ha, you got to know how it is. Can I just go down memory lane a little bit? Ha, I know we can run to the supermarket, ha, but I remember the day it was just Piggly Wiggly. Uh huh. I had another little store called Red and White. Uh huh. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And you went in there, and they didn't have all them kind of meats we got now, separated and stuff. You were glad to go in there, and you went there and went to the meat part. 
and you didn't have it, you're separated. <laughs> and mama would go in there <laughs> and she'd buy baloney. <laughs> but the baloney wasn't cut. <laughs> it was a long stick <laughs> of just, you know, baloney. <laughs> And then you went over to the other part called government cheese. Uh And that thick block of cheese. And we were glad to get it. But now you bring that home. Then look at what that is. But my brothers and my sisters, we got to remind ourselves how good God has been. And so David, now when he writes, he reminisces. He said, because the Lord is my light. I'm still here. There were times when I came home and the enemy came in the back door and took all my family. I was so depressed and even my enemies turned on me. My friends turned on me because he said, when I came back to Ziglag, the enemy had came in and took my family and my children, had took their wives from them, and now they're depressed. The same folk I helped get through their problems now said they want to kill me. But David said, what I'm going to do? He said, bring me the priest army. Bring me the priestly garment. It was called the ephod. And it was a garment when the priest come. He will wear it in and go in the presence of the Lord. How many came today and said, Lord, just let me get in your presence. I don't know how to fix this. I don't know how to deal with the problem. I got pain in my body. I got money shortage. I got family acting crazy. I got jobs trying to lay me off. And they're trying to kill my retirement. I'm talking to somebody. But I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, don't fret because of evildoers. And be not envious against the workers of iniquity. But they soon shall be cut off and wither like the green herb. Many of you got your mind in the wrong place and your affection in the wrong place. God want our affection to be on him. So David said, bring me the ephod. And he put on the priestly garment. And when he put it on, he went in the presence of the Lord. And he asked the Lord the question, shall I recover? Shall I get it all back? And the Lord said, David, pursue. You're going to recover it all. I thought by the tell Bible way. I don't know what you think, think you lost on the journey. But God told me to tell you, you're in recovery now. You're getting ready to be blessed on another level. I wish I had my 20 folk or jump on your feet. Say, I'm going to another level. I'm going there not because of my own goodness. I'm going because God is my strength. God is my rock. What he is to you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what he is to you, but I know what he is to me. He's my shepherd. And I shall not want Yes he He leaded me Beside still waters That's what he is to me I don't know about you But he is my provider That's who he is Abraham said he's Jehovah Jireh That's who he is Joshua said he's a battle axe In the time of battle That's who he is That's who he is to me. He's my rock and my shield. That's who he is to me. He's my joy in the midst of my sorrow. He's my hope when I can't see tomorrow. That's who he is to me. Who he is to you? I don't know. But one thing I do know, he'll never leave me. Never forsake me. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. That's who he is. I find somebody who's a neighbor. I know who he is. He's my own and all. All 
that I've been through, all the pain I've suffered, all the stuff in the midnight where other folk were sleeping, I was awake saying, Lord, what's going on? I prayed and I fasted. I prayed and I fasted. I prayed and I fasted. I studied. I meditated. But it looked like the problem wasn't going nowhere. But soon I heard the Lord say, stand still and see the salvation. And when I stopped trying to figure it out, the Lord worked it out. Yeah, he's a problem, but he's a problem solver. That's who he is to me, who he is to you. If you know he's been good, put a praise right there. He was comfort in the midnight. Yes, he was. He hold me in his loving arm. He rocked me when I need a rock. Y'all, excuse me. Woo. If you got the tip to make tip off, go ahead and tip. But there's another kickoff that I'm waiting on. And that kickoff say, in the moment of a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, when the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and they that remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. That's the kickoff I'm waiting on. I'm waiting on. I'm trying to quit. I'm trying to quit. When my brother drowned, I struggle. When my dad, stepdad died, I struggle. When my mom died, I struggled. But when I had that stroke, I really struggled. But when I look back, what God has done, I ain't got time to be cute. I ain't got time to wait on folk no more. You got to know who God is. You got to know who he is. If you ever get your who straight, your why ain't going to hinder you. Get your who together. You got to know who he is. He's not always going to bring you out the den. Sometimes you got to spend the night with them rascals. And I'm not talking about them four-legged ones. I'm talking about the two-legged ones. He always going to bring out that den. But you got to know God can keep you in the midst of the lions. And when David pursued his enemy, show how good God is. The enemy left a little boy behind. And David could have killed him, but he said, if you spare my life, I'll tell you where your stuff is. David spared his life. David went in, killed his enemies, got everything back, and more. I come to tell somebody, get ready for more.
That joy you thought you get ready for more. That anointing you thought you lost, get ready for more. Hallelujah. Anybody want more from God? Ha. You more, you want more, run up here. Ha. So, Lord, I'm coming to get my more. Ha. Hallelujah. I'm not coming to get what was left. Ha. I want more anointing. Ha. I want more power. Ha. I want deeper faith. Ha. I want more. Ha. I want my praise to be more. Ha. I want my worship to be more. Hallelujah. I went through some things and I lost some things on the journey. But I want more from you. I had to go through some stuff to get here. But once I got here, and I appreciate what you can do. Because all the stuff you brought me through, I knew it was just a setup for more. All that I went through, just touch them by it's a setup for more. That's all it was. That's why David said, The Lord is. The Lord is. You got to finish the is. You got to finish that is. I know what he is to me. David knows what he is to him. But who he is to you. If you know who he is, go ahead and put a praise right there. If you know what he is to you, you don't have to explain it to anybody you just know who he is I may not act like you but I know who he is I may not dance I may not run I may not even shout but I know who he is I know who he is I know who he is I know who he is. He's a way maker. He's a heart fixer. He's a promise keeper. <laughs> That's who he is. <laughs> That's who he is. That's who he is. That's who he is. With those hands lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus. I love you, Lord. God, you know their need. You know who you are to them. For your mercy never you fails me. I believe more is coming. All I my more days. Is coming. Yes, I've more been held in more your hands. More power is coming. From the more moment wisdom, that I wake up. There's so much more until I lay my head. So I said, Thank you, Lord. I will sing. I said, Thank you, Lord. Of the goodness of God. You heal, you the deliverer, you the savior. If there's one who's not saved, because all my life you have been faithful. In the name of Jesus the Christ. All my life you have been so, so good. I feel it, Lord. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. Thank you, you have led me through the fire in, the name of Jesus Christ, have your way. in darkest Jesus night. Name, I pray. You Amen. are close like no other. God bless you. Don't give up on God. Sir. I know you as a father. Don't give up on God. I know I you as a friend. And I have lived. In the goodness of God. If you know it, go ahead and begin to praise you. Because all my life you have been faithful. Oh, yes, you have. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because your goodness is running after, 
is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything, yeah. Cause your goodness is running after, is running after me. Oh, your goodness, your goodness is running after. Running after, running after me. me.